Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. This video is an extension to my previous video. Last week we created a little scoreboard in AI. In this video, we'll create a timer represented by a slider which is defined by us and when the timer is up, the game is over. As mentioned before, this project is an extension to my previous videos. I'll post the links in the description and also try to attach relevant scripts. If you like my work, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get back to Unity. So as you see this project is from my last week's video but if you want to learn about the logic to implement a timer on a slider you can do so here. First on the shoot script game object I have two scripts one which is responsible for shooting those red bullets in the form of spheres the other is simple scoring script which basically counts the score for each spider hit. First we'll mock up the slider so for that we need to see it in the world space. I'll place it in the spider parent prefab so that we see the slider when the spiders are spawned. Add a slider by right clicking on the scoreboard UI and slider. Position it correctly and scale it appropriately. By default, the fill is not extended to the end, so correct that. It, it feels correct now. So revert this back from red to white as we will change the colors during runtime. Now add a text on the top of the slider to mention the seconds left. So right click on slider UI and text mesh pro. It looks huge. Let's adjust that. Add a placeholder text for now and adjust the scale. Adjust the game object such that the text is displayed over the slider neatly. That looks fine. Timer 20 seconds. Let's bring back the value of the fill to zero. Now this is set, so we move on to create the game over text. So similarly, right click on the scoreboard UI, Text Mesh Pro, Adjust transform and position it, position it above the slider. Change color to red. Now rename the necessary game objects in scene. So as you remember from my last videos, we had to use tags to find the game objects in scene. Similarly, let's add tags to all game objects. We will control as they are spawned dynamically. Let's, all, let's add all the necessary tags. With all the possible tags done, let's assign the tags to the respective game objects. Now that all the mocking up is complete, let's add a script called timer slider 
to make the mockup functional. I'll add a script and assign it to the shoot script game object. Inside the script, we'll start with a few class variables. First of all, we need a slider, let's call it timer slider. Then we need a timer text to be written on top of the slider. Let's add game time as to how long we want the game to run. Then let's use an image for changing the fill color during runtime. We need to we need two public fields to enter color. So one is the normal fill color, and the other one is the warning fill color. Uh, next, we need to uh, a variable to store warning limit as a percentage. Add a boolean stop timer, which will be helpful to control states of the game. Then a text mesh pro for the end game over text. In the start method, what we need to is first of all to make the stop, stop timer false, then ensure the shoot game object is true. Then for the game over text, we need to find it and mark it as false. Next, we'll try to find timer slider and timer text. Please remember the tags are done already. Now same for the fill image. Assign the game time value to the timer slider dot max value and the rest accordingly. In the update method, first we start reducing the game time using the time dot delta time, then in a string time text time which needs to be displayed, like time left these many seconds. Then start adding conditions with if slider values goes below the warning limit, we change the fill color to the warning color. Then when the game time is up, we need to do a few things. Firstly, stop the timer. Then stop the shoot script so no bullets fire after the timer is over. Then destroy the slider and show the game over text. And also, when the game is over, find all spiders then store it in an array and delete it if they have a spider tag on them. Another condition is basically if the timer is running, then assign the text time to the timer text and game time to the slider value. This condition should ideally be on the top when the timer is running, although it shouldn't matter but it's a good practice to read from top down.
Now that's done, back to Unity. Here, let's assign the warning limit and colors. It looks complete. Now a quick overview of the text appearing we did a week back. I'll just fix it so that we can see the score properly. Now the animation looks fine. Apply the overrides on score point canvas game object. Delete from the hierarchy as it's already a prefab. Save scene and start building. Add your scene. But wait, found a couple of small things in the timer slider script on line 58. It should be timer slider dot max value, not the game time. The second thing is add a condition in the if statement so that this if runs only until the game time's game time is less than equal to zero, and stop timer is false. As soon as, this, uh, as soon as the stop timer becomes true, this if won't be true. And unnecessary commands here won't be ex executed. I think that's a cleaner approach. Now save and go back to the scene. Save scene and build this project. As you see now, I had 20 seconds and the timer is running down. I'll try to get a big score on the scoreboard. As soon as the timer is complete, it shows game over and you can see a score on the scoreboard. Your bullets are disabled as well. This is a simple timer used in World Space AR. That's it for today. If you like my work, give it a thumbs up, subscribe as I'll be posting unit related videos possibly every week and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Thank you and peace.